what would you tell a kingdom-minded, faith-based creator, maker, entrepreneur, or aspiring one? Yeah, for sure. Right, that's that's in this tension. Yeah. Right, of uh, man, I feel like God put something in my heart, but I don't know if I'm hearing him clearly. Yeah. Uh, honestly, only one way to find out. Start. <laughs> If you don't know you're hearing God, there's only one way to find out. Bust a move. Mm. Do something. We're so embarrassed. I don't even want to use the word embarrassed. It's another word that's going to be fit better than embarrassed. We are so afraid to miss God. Yes, 100%. Because we think it does something to his reputation. Right. Above that... We're afraid of what it does to ours. Sure. And I'm telling you, I'm just down to flop. Wow. Like, I ain't scared of, like, missing the Lord. If I've checked with my wise counsel and Juliet and I are in agreement, what's the worst thing that happens if it doesn't work? Love that. I learned something. 100%. I bet you I learned something. 100%. And because nothing is wasted, there's no season of your life that's wasted both successes and failures, they're information for what you do next. That's right. I remember when I started uh, Embassy City, right? So I planted a church, um, got to about 1,800 in attendance, highest watermark. Yeah. Um, But giving, um, the giving came in as like a 3,000 member church. Okay. I don't don't know. Disproportionate generosity. Bruh. Let's go. That's just, it was beautiful. Come on. When, when we got, Gateway sends us to plant the church. Everybody I hired, I fired. Mm. I was the worst CEO of all time. <laughs> Sucked. <laughs> Sucked. You know the last person I fired? Who? Me. There you go. Wow. Mm-hmm. I fired myself from the position I was in. Because I suck as a CEO. Like, mm. if you want me to oversee people, no, no. I cast vision. Right. And then God just brings people to get it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love on them. But yes. I should not be like sitting with them and like, hey, are you meeting your quota? And did you do this? And did you sure, do that? And sure. I got five people I have oversight over and I need to meet with you because mm-hmm. I'm your boss. Ew. Right. I'm the worst. Right. <laughs> but you let me cast vision. Yeah. And walk away. Right. Oh, we're going we're gonna to be on the top of the mountain in 22 weeks. What does that process look like, though? You're, you're hearing from God. You get a sense, right? Yeah, for sure. But is he giving you clearly what the vision is? Or what does a process look like to clarify so, and articulate the vision? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the, the vision for me is like very high macro. Okay. Right? Like um, at Embassy City Church, the overall vision became, and which is the name of our company now, Upset the World, uh, we are here to upset the world with the message, love, and hope of Jesus Christ. Mm. Beautiful, simple. Amazing. Objective, right? Yeah. We are literally turning people's lives upside down with the message, the love, and the hope of Jesus Christ. Yes. All right, so what does that message look like? Well, as a pastor, it looked like me preaching sermons. What does yep. it look like now? It looks like podcasts. It looks like comedy. It looks like speaking at corporate events. I can give this message in all of these different places, and whether I actually utter Jesus' name or not, beautiful. the message is coming forward, the love is coming forward, and that hope is coming forward. So good. What does that hope lead back to? It leads back to a tangible uh, uh, philosophy that you can actually interact with. Mm. It's called car- cultural architecture. Yeah. And cultural architecture is when you establish such an attractive philosophy that people want to Buy it, wear it, say it, it, proclaim it, walk in it, be a part of it. That's where the dwellers come from. Mm. We didn't come up with dwellers. Your audience came. Our community came up with Your community came. They told us what to call them. Let's go. Right? So when they start wearing the clothes, right? When they start wearing shoes that say press B on them, when they start putting it on their coffee mugs, right? When you see pictures of them at 5.45 in the morning in their commute to work, listening to a pod. When you see somebody working out who's ripped and they got like 2% body fat, but we're on in the back. It's like, we have become a part of people's lives. And when you, come, when you become a part of somebody's life, 
you have a vision that has become so infectious hmm. that even when you stop talking about it, they Other keep, people keep talking, talking about, about it. it. Yeah. 